Hello, my name is Thomas and I'm the founder of the Squeezeplug project. In this video tutorial I'd like to show you how you can quickly transform your Raspberry Pi into a very capable media server and player. I'll show you everything you need for the base configuration of a media server. Squeezeplug also offers a number of further possibilities that I'll explain in subsequent tutorials. Squeezeplug is a platform for a number of media servers and players. In the process of configuring Squeezeplug, following the simple menus, you can choose between different servers and players. The following media servers are supported. Logitech Media Server, Mini DLNA Server, Twonky Media Server, MPD and MediaToom. All these servers run under Squeezeplug out of the box. This means that you nearly need to choose a server and the installation configuration will be undertaken completely by Squeezeplug. As well as the media servers, a variety of players can also be installed so your Raspberry Pi can be used as a complete media solution. So you can transfer files from your music collection, Samba is already installed. Besides its main function as a platform for a media server, Squeezeplug offers other features which would be too much to include in this initial video tutorial. And best of all, you need no Linux know-how to get Squeezeplug working. Squeezeplug offers many more possibilities than other media solutions. In connection with, for example, Logitech Media Server, a free media server, it is possible to build a multi-room media system. This means that your music collection can sit in a single place in your house or flat on your Raspberry Pi with Squeezeplug installed. The collection can sit on a directly attached external hard drive or on a network share on your in-house network. In every room you want to play music, you only need to have a Raspberry Pi with squeeze plug and a player installed. Management of the lot can be achieved through a variety of remote controllers, typically free apps for smartphones or the like. It's possible to build a multi-room media solution completely from free software that sits on Raspberry Pi and other, e.g. smartphone or tablet hardware. Other comparable solutions are much dearer and offer less functionality and flexibility. Here I've illustrated the base architecture of Squeezeplug's ecosystem. It's important to understand the differences between Squeezeplug Server, Squeezeplug Player and Remote Controller. Squeezeplug Player is connected to an audio amplifier either through the Pi's internal sound card or via a USB sound card or digital to analog converter. Connection to your in-house network can either be via wired or Wi-Fi connection. So I can better present the possibilities that Squeezeplug offers, I'd like briefly to demonstrate how Squeezeplug appears in practice. For a remote controller I'm using an iPad with iPeng installed on it. Other remote controllers have similar capabilities and are available for most platforms. Here you can see the music collection and on the right hand side available players. You can select a player and then some music that you'd like to play on that player. In this example, the remote controller, the iPad, is also the player. I can control everything from the remote, including the sound volume. Changing to other tracks is possible by using the app's touch interface. Choosing other albums is simple, as is scrolling through very large music collections. As well as your own music collection, you can also listen to web radio and many online music services like, for example, Spotify.
OK, let's look for a moment at what things we need to make squeeze plug work. A Raspberry Pi, of course, a power supply with sufficient power, and an SD card with at least 4 gigabytes of memory, class 6 or better. As well as the hardware, you'll need a few software tools, USB image tool and putty. Before you start, make absolutely sure that the Raspberry Pi has a connection to the internet. During the installation process, data will be frequently downloaded from the internet. Without a connection, a complete installation and configuration is just not possible. In the following slides you'll see how a Raspberry Pi is prepared for the initial squeeze plug boot. Initially, we must download an SD card image from my website. Navigate to squeezeplug.de and click on the right hand side on squeeze plug downloads. Now we have to make a choice between the hard and soft float versions. Choose hard float if you're happy you won't want to install something later which is not HF compatible. Recently Spotify has become HF compatible so HF is the preferred version. Because of the improving support for HF applications it's conceivable that the SF version will not be supported in the foreseeable future. The download will last a few minutes depending on your internet connection speed. After the download you will need to unzip the file. Having unzipped the file you should start up the USB image tool. Note here that it's essential to run the program as administrator. When it's running, select device mode. Next, click on the options tab and select the top two options so there should be no problems loading the image if the SD card is slightly smaller than the image. Having done that, click on restore so the image file is expanded and written to the SD card. You can also use the USB image tool to take a backup of your SD card when Squeezeplug is completely installed, configured and working. When the SD card is ready, plug it into the Raspberry Pi and boot the Pi by plugging in the power supply. If possible, you should connect a monitor and keyboard for the first start. However, since Squeezeplug will later run as a headless device, you don't have to connect either to make it work. We won't be using a monitor for this tutorial. If you've got no monitor and keyboard directly attached to the Pi, we can connect using PuTTY or another terminal emulation tool. Using PuTTY, we try to use the Pi's host name, but this doesn't work in every network. If it doesn't, you'll have to discover the address of the Raspberry Pi. Later I'll show you a simple way to do this. Using PuTTY, connect using SSH port 22 and log on using root as the ID and the password of no suit for you. After login, the next action is to expand the window that PuTTY is running in. Otherwise there could be problems later with the display of the squeeze plug menus. You'll get a message there, there saying we're generating new SSH keys and subsequently you'll be asked to confirm that you accept the license terms and conditions. Squeezeplug is free software under the GNU public license. Next we check to see whether there are any updates outstanding for Squeezeplug. If there are they'll be downloaded and installed. OK, in this case we're not. Now we should enable Squeezeplug to use the SD cards total memory in the event that the image was loaded into cards with say 8 gigabytes only 4 gig will have been used. To do this we select expand root FS but before you do this let's have a look see how we can find out the address of a squeeze plug. Here you'll see I've started up the IP scanner you can find the reference to that from my website one of the addresses you can see is that of the squeeze plug 192.168.2.75. Now select expand root 
FS. The process takes place in two stages during which the squeeze plug must be rebooted. Here the current size of the file system is shown, taking only 3 gigabytes. After the first stage, squeeze plug is rebooted and we'll now have to reconnect after the reboot giving a warning message telling us that the SSH keys have changed. That's OK. Log in again using root and no suit for you, remembering to enlarge the putty window. Now the file system will be expanded to the full size of the SD card, a process which can take a little time. At the completion of the process, a message is displayed. Now we can start the squeeze plug setup. Enter the command setup at the console, again remembering to expand the window to allow the menus to be displayed. The main menu appears, from which all squeeze plugs configuration settings can be managed. The menus drive submenus from which single functions can be started. I've confined myself here to the key settings which will apply to everybody. I'm starting with the time zone setting. The remainder you can examine yourself later, getting to the menu by typing setup at the command prompt. Under Advanced Configuration some important options are located and from here we choose Samba. Samba will later allow Squeezeplug to access other computers in the network. How that works I'll show you later on in this tutorial. Next, I'll configure the media library. This library will be made known to Squeezeplug and all media servers you later install. In this example, I've copied a few music files onto a USB stick, which Squeezeplug will use as the media library. I choose Media Library and confirm with a yes. To understand the structure of the media library, you should read the menu text carefully. Because we want to use the USB stuck we've already plugged in, choose USB. Next we can choose the mount point at which we want to connect the USB stick. Here we've chosen mount HD1. If you haven't yet plugged in a USB stick, do it now. It'll be automatically recognised. When everything is OK, we confirm with a yes. Now we can choose whether we want to format the USB stick or not. In this example, we've already formatted the stick and we've copied music onto it, so we reply with a no. Next, the USB stick will be mounted onto the file system and made usable. This can easily be checked by exiting from the menu system and examining from the console whether the data can be seen. When we've done this, we'll return to the setup menus for more configuring. Now, select Server and Player from the main menu. In this tutorial, we'll configure Logitech Media Server, so select Server, then LMS. The other servers are installed in a similar fashion. After choosing LMS, we have the option of selecting installation or deinstallation, select install read the license terms and accept them. After this we have the opportunity to choose a specific version of LMS or simply by hitting return select the current recommended stable version to install. The URLs you'll need to locate specific versions you can find on my website. Having chosen to install the recommended version the installation which may take a few minutes begins. After installation, it could take some while before you can browse to the LMS web interface, so you need to be a little patient.
Now, using your web browser, navigate to the LMS server using Squeezeplug's IP address, or its name if that works, with the following colon 9000. We are presented with an account login, which you can complete, or alternatively, if we don't have an account, you can create one. Having entered the account details, the next panel will allow us to select the path to the music library, which we've configured earlier, in our case Mount HD1. When you've selected that, LMS will immediately start scanning the library and tags in the music files. You can monitor this by clicking on the rescanning music library. Depending on how large the library is, the scanning process can take several hours. On completion, your music library will be organised by LMS so that you can navigate to specific albums or tracks. Because we've not yet installed a player, we can't yet play our music. The player you saw earlier is attached to my network, though not connected or defined to this LMS. For this reason, we now want to install a player on Squeezeplug. So, navigate to the player menu and choose Squeeze Lite, which in my view is the best free player. Next choose Update to get the most up-to-date version from the internet. Having done that, we select Install. Now we can give the player a name. If we provide no input, the default name of Squeeze Lite is given. After entering the name, the system displays the available LMS servers on our network, simply as information for you. If you've only got a single LMS, you can choose the Auto Discovery option or enter manually the address of the server that you'll be using. In this case, we enter our address of the Raspberry Pi, since the Pi will both have the LMS server and Squeeze Lite player installed on it. The next step tells us which sound cards are supported and requests us to select which sound card we're using. As we've got no external sound card, we choose RPI internal. Then we can decide whether to increase the size of the ALSA buffer, the software that drives the sound cards. If you get problems with replay using Squeeze Lite, you can try out these options, but I suggest that initially you leave them alone. Also, manually editing the Squeeze Light config files is not really necessary. Squeeze Light should just work without. With speakers connected, sound should now come out of the Raspberry Pi. If you want, you can also install another free player, Squeeze Play, on your PC. You'll find the link on my website. This player will function just like a SqueezeBot Touch, although, of course, it's software and not hardware. Here I've started it and I select My Music. Selecting the library of Squeeze Plug, the server we already installed. Now you can see I can scroll through the library and select appropriate music.
Finally, I'd like to show you, as I promised earlier, that you could access files on Squeezeplug from your PC. From Network, you should be able to see Squeezeplug. With a click, you'll find two shares. One is the music library and the other is the root file system. Now you can simply copy your music from your PC to Squeezeplug. OK, so now we've configured Squeezeplug and are ready. I'd like to thank those who have supported me in the development of Squeezeplug, especially those whose software I've used in the Squeezeplug project. Without you, Squeezeplug would not have been possible. Many thanks. If you'd like to squeeze plug and would like the project to be developed further in the future you could support it by making a contribution with each donation you contribute to the project I am able to reduce the cost load of the project in the future many thanks to close I'd like to make you aware of one of the other cool features that squeeze plug offers this is in the style of a time machine clone with the help of Genie 9 you can use Squeezeplug as a backup machine alongside its main function of a media server. I'll show you how it works here. We begin again with Setup, select Miscellaneous Services and then Genie 9. Then we select the path to our media library using the cursor controls. Now we select which version of Genie 9 we want. I recommend the Pro version. Having made the choice, this will be downloaded from the internet. Next we're asked whether we want to get a voucher with which we can obtain a 10 euro discount from the price of Genie 9 product after which the voucher will be created. Under Network on our PC we'll find a new share called Genie 9. Here is the installation package that we can install on our Windows PC. After the installation, the Genie 9 setup wizard will start. Using the wizard, initially we select our backup target. That is our squeeze plug device with the Genie 9 share. In the next stage we choose which data to back up. Here I will select my personal files simply as an example. Now I select again so that backup data will be compressed. After that the backup starts automatically. From now on changes on my Windows PC will be monitored and automatically secured and backed up to a user-defined time interval. The discount voucher by the way you'll find on the GD9 share on Squeezeplug. <laughs>